Today on CCHF Talk. We serve a shepherd when we are cast that can see us. That's the good news. CCHF Talk is produced by Christian Community Health Fellowship, where healthcare providers, executives, and students come together to educate, encourage, and engage. Join us as we explore topics related to healthcare to marginalized communities. Those talks, those conversations. CCHF Talk. I'm James Brooks. I serve as CEO of Lawndale Christian Health Center. I've been in my role for um, two years and three months, but who's counting, right? Uh, with me is uh, Dr. Christopher Dodd, and he'll introduce himself when he get up. But I just wanna I'm, let you know right now that this session, Steve asked me to do a workshop, and at the moment, he, I think he texted me or something like that, and at the moment, I was feeling weary. And I said, okay, the weary leader. So this session is going to be very, I hope, I'll be very transparent, authentic with you. And I may ask the same of you, hint, hint, hint. This is a time of what I've noticed in the last couple of days here. Rick is right over there. Just the, just the vulnerability that people have been sharing about, you know, uh, about leadership, about failure, about how they really feel behind the scenes. So gracious God, we give you thanks and praise for this time. Be with us now, Jesus. We commit this time to you. It's in your son, Jesus. It's, it's in your name, Lord, we pray. Amen. All right, so this is Lawndale. This is Ogden Avenue, actually. If you ever come and visit us, we would love for you to come and visit. Walk down Ogden. You can go for several blocks. And Lawndale Christian Health Center, um, along with Lawndale Christian Community Church, own a uh, majority of the property. Um, uh, for, for if you walk, I don't know, eight blocks or so, nine blocks, you know, we pretty much own every piece of parcel there is. Uh, so it's amazing. It's amazing what God has done on Ogden Avenue. This isn't our only campus. This is, this is one campus. We have four other campuses. So God has made a way. We're in over 23 um, homeless shelters. Um, a lot of fun stuff is going on. So as my role as a CEO, you know, some, sometimes people want to come. I, I love it that young people in our community, they get excited. One guy, maybe about a couple of months ago, he met me for the first time and uh, he started to, tears started to come down his eyes because he was like, wow, I get to meet somebody, a CEO that looks like me. And it was, it was pretty cool, right? But it also carried a lot of weight with it. But there are several people often that just want to know, like, what, what do I look like? I mean, what do I look at every day? Uh, what's on my heart? What's on my mind? And so I, I, I'll start sharing some stuff. So um, I look at our revenue, right? Look at our revenue. I look at how we make money, how we're doing. I keep a close eye on our in investments. I, I look at our banking account almost every day to make sure that... Um, it's still, the money is still in there, right? Uh, I want to be a good steward of the finances. Uh, I look at, you know, um, our payer mix. You know, how do we get paid? And it's amazing to me that we have so many Medicaid patients, and those are the most vulnerable and uh, those who we care for. And I I'm thankful. So a um, lot of managed care um, work. You know, on these calls, I see Dr. Roll back there. We're on calls all the time, you know, letting them know our metrics, how we're doing. A lot of that on a weekly basis, if not on a daily basis. So, you know, Lawndale, we're doing okay. Our, I look at our dashboard. How are we doing with turnover? And I get really excited about that because not too bad for an organization that's up to 713 employees. Uh, we have a turnover rate of uh, 14%, uh, which is really good, really good compared to some, um, some of our peer organizations, right? So, so we're thankful about that. Often looking at turnover, like at, you know, what job titles are we losing the most and how, how do we best care for our staff? Yeah, what else can I say about 
um, just always looking at uh, how best can we care for our staff. And right now we're at 713 and we got some other programs like PACE coming that starts June 1st. And that's gonna bring on, probably open up another 30 to 40 positions. And so pretty soon we're gonna be a well over 800 employees as an organization in North Lawndale. And here I am, family deeply rooted in North Lawndale, leading the anchor institution in Lawndale. And I, I'm thankful, I'm thankful that we can have such an impact and our, our staff members stay with us uh, for a long time. Um, one thing, you're gonna know this about me, uh, because I'm not a numbers guy, I need to make it as simple as possible. And so I talked with my CFO two years ago and I said, let's make a, a financial dashboard that'll be m easier for uh, me to understand. Yeah, I, I can do the spreadsheet, but I like dashboards, especially with a community board. It's just a lot easier to understand. So I always look at, you know, I blacked out stuff because this isn't about, you know, numbers right now, right? But I look at cash on hand, make sure that we can stay viable if nothing else comes in. We're thankful that we have investments because many organizations uh, don't even have um, investments, so we're thankful there. I look at um, our grants, um, what's coming in this year, and many of you know um, those Har ARPA dollars have dried up and um, like those, that grant money and one-time funding, that's going away. Are we paying our bills on time? You know, our revenue coming in and all of that. So any of this stuff that I share up here, um, and I see you guys taking pictures, which is great. Uh, I'll be willing to share it with you guys. Uh, we're in this together. This is a, a CCHF movement, right? And we're in this together. No big eyes and little U's. This is an exciting thing, right? Exciting. Man, right now we're in the process of building this brand new academic building. Yesterday, we just matched eight more residents, right? Woo! God be the glory. Yeah. So God be the glory, right? So we're up to 20 residents right now. And uh, this is, I, I had um, a role in designing, you know, what the building will look like. So this is going to be coming up. Uh, pretty soon in the next two years, we'll have it up and our residents will have a nice space to, to, to the, do their work, right? Uh, so we're excited about this. A lot of good stuff. A lot of good stuff going on at Lawndale Christian Health Center. Woo! Yeah, yeah a lot of good stuff. A lot of good stuff. Yeah, I'm setting y'all up, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm setting you up because I want to keep it 100. All right, what does that mean? Some of y'all, let's well, keep it 100, 100. You don't keep it 100. You, <laughs> you keep it 100, all right? Keep it 100. You really tell, yeah, I'm, I, I named all of that great stuff that's happening, but the real talk, I, I, need, I need to confess, right? There's some stuff in my life as the leader, all of this great stuff that goes on, but there, there's some confession that needs to take place. And that, that's my hope that, yeah, you see, you see the glory, but you don't know the story, right? And I, I want to give you the story. And um, I want, like I said at the beginning, I want to be very transparent with you. And I, I'm trusting you with this, right? And I, I hope that you'll give me um, some of your stuff, too. I share my stuff. You share your stuff. All right, family? Oh, some of that. <laughs> some of y'all like, uh-oh. <laughs> I let's look at that. Woo! Man, look at that picture of that brother right there. Smooth. All right. Smooth brother. Look at I even put Reverend Doctor and then I put all the letters. I did that intentionally so y'all see. Man, that that dude, man, he's worked hard. Whoa. Whoa, look at all of that. Wow. Yeah. But I got some confessions. There are times, all that I just told you about, all the credentials, there are times that I'm just a work workaholic. My wife here is on the front row, and I work from Sunday to Saturday, nonstop, nonstop. Working, 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 and then working some more. Always working. 
times that I've been at home and my wife says, I need you to be at home, but I'm, but I'm home. No, but she says, no, you're not home because I have my phone in my hand and there's constant emails all the time. If it's not an email, it's a text me message. Come on, some of y'all looking at me like you know what I'm talking about. I have, uninterrupt, I have interrupted seat. I don't sleep well at night. I told y'all all this stuff is going on. Wow, mighty Lawndale. Yeah, there's most of the time I get up about three in the morning and I can't go back to sleep because I'm working. I'm working. I, I can't say it every day, but a lot of times it, it happens where I'm up at night I even sent a text message to some of my CEO peers in Illinois, um, in the Chicagoland area, and I said, hey, how are you guys sleeping? And out of the 10 that are in the text thread, nine of them said, we're not doing well. We're not doing well. What time are you waking up? And we all, the, I could show you the thread. Some said two o'clock, some said one o'clock, some said three o'clock. Inconsistent with my exercise, don't be fooled, right? <laughs> God has just blessed me with some genes where I don't get real big, you know, it's just, but I, like, I, I struggle. I struggle. Actually, uh, last year, I tried to get myself in shape, did a 21-day workout exercise with my wife. She's a beast. She, she's strong. I tried to hang. And then I ended up having exercise-induced cardiomyopathy. Rushed to the hospital. My troponin levels were 22,000. Right, Dr. Roll? So you see all this, you see all this stuff, right? Yeah, they're, they're, they're as heavy as the crown, right? I worry about our staff all the time. I woke up last night thinking about our staff. I got a message, so sometimes because I'm a pastor as well, Yesterday, I got a message from one of our staff members saying, uh, Dr. Brooks, I haven't told anybody this, but we are experiencing homelessness with my three boys. Can you help me? I worry about our staff. So yeah, 713 staff, 14 staff, whatever. Man, y'all, I worry about them. I'm concerned about them. They're, they're in my neighborhood, they're my neighbors. And I feel guilty sometimes, because it's like, how, how am I living like this? I, I, my lights are on, and they struggling to keep their lights on. That's the real talk. Oh, I'm a pastor. Here I go. And y'all, I'm not consistent in my word and my prayer life like I should be. I delay decisions sometimes because I don't want to deal with the consequences. Because no matter what decision I make, I'm going to have opposition. No matter what decision I make. If I say this, clinicians are going to be upset. If I say this, operations is going to be upset. It does not matter. <laughs> but I got to make, make the call. At the end of the day, that's why I'm in my role. I got to make the call. But it's not fun. Oh, my goodness. There are times I just feel all alone. I could be at an all-staff meeting with all of our employees there, and I feel like I'm the only person in the room. What about you? What about you in your role? I'm just really transparent with you. How are you feeling? Can you, can you confess the stuff that's going on with you? Because I think that's where healing begins. We have to reveal it in order to heal it. Rewind, press play. You have to reveal it in order to heal it. So what about you? What about you? Right? Because, you know, I, I hear it constantly. Oh, you're a pastor. What are you doing in this role? Oh, my goodness. Bruce Miller had this skill set. You don't have this skill set. You should. So what I do, I overcompensate. Right? Okay, I don't know finances. Okay, every night I'm gonna get up, I'm gonna study, I'm gonna learn Excel, I'm gonna study all, I'm, I'm reading, I'm watching YouTube videos. Oh, you don't think I can do this? I got it. Matter of fact, I'm gonna create dashboards, better, everything, right? Right, all that insecurity rises up, right? And, and it causes you to overcompensate. Say, say yes, I do belong and living vicariously in that patient, in that pain, right? 
and, and scripture says weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And y'all are used to me talking about the joy. But there are some times that I have to say, Lord, when will the morning ever come? Weeping may endure for a night. Come on, come on. But joy comes in the morning. Come on, morning. Come on, morning. Come on, morning. It's, it's daytime, and where's the morning? Because I'm still feeling, yeah, and it, everything. We got a lot of stuff going on, right? But no, it, it's, it's the cost of leadership. I got a problem with... Um, with Paul, <laughs> because he says, let us not become weary in doing, no, Paul, you're wrong, because you will become weary. I think this is why Jesus says, come unto me, all who are weary and burdened. <laughs> I'm going with Jesus. <laughs> I'm, I'm riding out with JC all day, because that's, that's the real talk, because we become weary on this, bur on this journey called leadership, weariness, the state of condition, as Dr. Doc comes, the state of condition of being physically or mentally exhausted by hard work, exertion, strain, tiredness, and fatigue, impatient, dissatisfaction with something tedious or burdensome. Experience the unique CCHF conference designed for those who see medicine as a calling be inspired to live out the gospel through healthcare with practical tools and best practices from faith-driven experts. Connect with like-hearted individuals and strengthen your mission. Visit cchfconference.org for details and registration. Let me turn this over to Pastor Dot, because I, I just left you guys down in the dumps, <laughs> and I don't want to leave you there. We got to offer you some hope. She said I'm bogus for that, all right. <laughs> Hopefully I'm a hope dealer at some point today. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, not only uh, am I James Book's friend, uh, I'm also an employee at Lawndale Christian Health Center. I'm the learning and development manager. And I've been in this role for about two years. I'm also a pastor, uh, but my proudest title is I'm Shalonda Dodd's husband and the dad of Kennedy, Reagan and Madison. Yes, I am a girl dad. And as we're dealing with this aspect of a weary leader, I begin to think through what is the biblical context of someone that is weary. And I believe that this, this picture is painted in the life of Elijah. And on the screen, we have a little bit of 1 Kings 19. And I'll read a little bit of it. It says, now Ahab told Jezebel, Everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, May the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if th by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like one of them. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came into Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there. While he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness he came to a broom bush, he sat down under it, get this, and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord. Has anyone ever said that? I have had enough, Lord. Lord, arrivederci. Lord, au revoir. May the Lord watch between me and thee while we're absent one from another. Peace in your leadership. As we look at the life of Elijah, and Pastor Brooks talked about the mountaintop moments, how the health center is continuing to grow. In chapter 18 of 1 King, Elijah has just witnessed one of the greatest moves of God. That's the Mount Carmel testimony, where God showed up and uh, he's already killed all of these prophets of Baal, and he's having a mountaintop moment. The first black CEO of Lawndale Christian Health Center, that's a mountaintop moment. But how many of you know that we don't live on the mountaintop? All of us 
despite our education, despite you can have more degrees on the wall than a thermometer, baby, you do not live on the mountaintop. And so there are several things that Elijah deals with in chapter 19 that highlights what it looks like to be a weary leader. There's a slide, but I think I'll just go through it by my, what's in my heart. Elijah is discouraged. He's discouraged because he's had this great victory in chapter 18, but in chapter 19, there's still more work to be done. Have you ever been there in your life that you finally got the job, you finally got the degree on the wall, but you're discouraged also because there's the tension of my now and my next. He's discouraged. He's discouraged because, get this, he's killed all of these prophets of Baal, but there's still somebody left that ain't dead. Her name is Jezebel. I hope there's no Jezebel names in here this morning. And he hears this threat of Jezebel and he begins to sink deeper and deeper into discouragement and depression. Several years ago, one of the things that I've struggled with personally is the theology of suffering. I'm the learning development manager at Londell Christian Health Center. I pastor a church on the south side called New Community Church, the church where God and people are loved. And in the pandemic, not only did I not know what I was doing, my parents' health began to fail. I'm the only child of E.C. and Dosha Dodd. And in December of 2020, my father went home to be with the Lord. And in 23 days later, so did my mother. How do you continue to move forward when you are depleted? How do you continue to trust God that he doesn't? I, I pray, Lord, would you heal daddy and mama? And if I could get a prayer through, I'm a pastor. I pay my tithes. I serve at Lana. No. And so he's dealing with being depleted. He's dealing with being discouraged. But the interesting thing of this passage, because I believe there's a point I need to give some hope because the way y'all looking at me right now, you and I, even when you're a weary leader, we need to know that God can be reached. Because in 1 Kings chapter 19, God meets Elijah in a cave. And when you can't get to God, God can get to you in your night season. And I pray at this conference as we deal with being a weary leader and thirsting for God, God can be reached. He's not only a God that can be reached, he's a God that can revive. Because in this passage, get this, he shows up as Elijah's in a cave, but God does some practical things. He, he allows Elijah to get some sleep. I don't know about you, but I've learned to thank God, not just for the money in the bank, but sometimes I've learned how to praise God for a good night sleep. He's a God that can be reached. He's a God that can revive. It's practical stuff he does for Elijah. He allows him to get some sleep, and then the Bible says he shows up with some angel cake. And so begin to look over your eating habits, right? I don't know about you, uh, I'm glad our HR director is here today. One of the things that she's great at doing at the health center, she, she brings snacks. Because I suffer from the condition of hangry. And by the way, y'all nodding y'all head, there's some other people that deal with that same diagnosis. He's a God that can be reached. He's a God that can revive. But thirdly, he's a God that knows how to recruit the right people. Because here it is, Elijah, he, wins, he goes into the cave by himself. And after, God gives him some practical things. He gives him sleep. He lets him get some food. And as God begins to speak to him, he lets him know that he's not the only one left. 
And at this conference, I pray that you've networked enough that you need to know you're not the only Christian left in the healthcare profession. He lets them know there's 7,000 people that have not bowed to Baal. I don't know how many people showed up, but I pray that before you leave here, you find at least one other person that can get in this journey with you. I'm so grateful that my friend is the CEO because I believe a part of me just being there is just to pray sometimes. Prayer still works. He's a God that's able to be reached. And I pray that as you've navigated being the weary leader and you press your way on this last day of the conference, understand God is still there. But he's also God that can revive. Begin to look over some practical things, your sleep, your food, your relationships, but he's also a God that recruits. I know I didn't get to all my slides because I'm a chocolate preacher and I can't help but get excited sometimes. But if you're weary in here today, you're not by yourself. He's a God that's concerned about you. And we're going to give you some practical resources of which you can use as we try to just keep on keeping on. Amen. Thank you. All right, here I am back. The preacher has preached. Uh, I did my D men my my dissertation on uh, Psalm 23, and during this time, I learned a lot about sheep. One thing I learned about sheep um, that I didn't know was about cast sheep. And before you um, over here, uh, you have a cast sheep that's upside down, can't get up. Um, and it's struggling. And unfortunately, many sheep die because they're cast. It can't get up. Why, how do they become cast? They become cast because of the weight that they're carrying. This weight is so much that it, they turn over and they can't, they can't get up and they struggle and they struggle and they struggle until they can't struggle anymore, until they give in. And unfortunately, unfortunately, they have other sheep that are looking on, but that sheep can't help them. That sheep, bye bye, right? Calling out to their brother or their sister, but they cannot be helped, cannot be helped. Can't help them, because the weight, the weight is too much, even for both of them. All right, here we go, y'all. But Psalm 23 says what? The Lord is my shepherd. When, all right, I'm going to try to stay, come, all right, here I go. Because uh, when nobody can help us, we have a, a shepherd who's in the business of restoration. Every day, renewing us. Uh, somebody pull that up. Somebody, somebody, Psalm 23. Let's open it up. Let's open it up. Psalm 23. Psalm 23. You let me catch, your, catch my breath. Have you ever been running and you just say, oh, I'm tired, and, and then all you need is just a moment, so what? So you can catch your breath, and God will restore us. He gives us those moments, those God moments, and we got to be intentional about looking for them, those moments where you just, all right, let me catch my breath. Oh, I can do this. Yeah, it's hard, but I got it because I start thinking about greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength, right? It's not in my own effort. I can't get up on my own, but we have a shepherd. When we can't see him, he always has his eyes on us. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Because all that stuff that I mentioned, that dark moment, the hope that I have is that God sees me. Wow. 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 Y'all remember Zacchaeus climbing up in the tree so that he could see Jesus? But the text says that Jesus saw him. You remember Peter sinking in the water? The text says Jesus saw him. We serve a shepherd when we are cast that can see us. That's the good news. That's what keeps us going. That's what keeps us hopeful. Don't you give up. Yes, it's hard. Yes, there are sleepless nights. Yes, there are times where you're saying, what's next and how are we going to make it? 
But God sees you. He cares for the cast. He cares for the ones that can. All right, y'all not shouting. I knew you weren't going to shout, but I'm preaching to myself right now. All right? Because sometimes you just got to preach to yourself. David said you got to encourage yourself in the Lord. He'll keep an eye on his sheep. He cares. He cares for us. The Lord is our shepherd. All right. I threw this one in just last week because I was just amazed. Rachel Herder, who is our chief information officer, she's, she's, she's an introvert, so much so that she likes to take trips into the wilderness all by herself. <laughs> Anybody else like that? <laughs> yeah, Rachel likes that. And so, but, but because of that, she, she shares a lot of things with me that I wouldn't normally experience because I'm, I'm, I, I love to be around people and not necessarily around trees. <laughs> but the, this, this, these aspen trees, like I'm looking at this, I'm looking like, wow, that's, that's a beautiful tree. That's a beautiful tree. But what's so beautiful about them is that it's, you think that's, that's multiple, yeah. but that's only one. They all share the same root system. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, all right. Although the grove of aspen appears to contain more than 20 trees, it is one organism that arose from a single seed. Uh, Y'all don't know where I'm going. This is the importance of community, right? And that's why CCS, HF has to continue to go stronger because we understand, yeah, we got different health centers, blah, blah. We're located here. Where you located? Where you located? Where you located? But we're all from the seat of, uh, we're all connected. Yeah, so I know that Londale is going to be all right. I know that other health centers are going to be all right. Why? Because we have each other. I'm, we're not going to let each other go. We're not. We're going to keep on praying for one another. This is why we forsake not to assemble ourselves together. Because it's just a reminder that we're all connected. We're all connected. Oh, we're strong, y'all. I'm leaving here this week, man. Man, I tell you, I, after hearing some of the testimonies and the, I, I'm leaving, yeah, I told you all of that stuff, but I needed this, this moment where God just allowed me to catch my breath. Amen. I say, devil, you should have got me last week, but you let me see this week. And I got around people of God to encourage me. I'm ready to go back now and say, for God I live and for God I'll die. Oh, I told y'all. I'm excited. I'm excited. But yeah, this is, we're in this together. All right, we're almost out of time. All right, and, and speaking of trees and being near Wayne Detmer, I felt pressure to at least bring up something by Wendell Berry. All right, those of you who know Wayne Detmer, he has a man crush on Wendell Berry. But one of those nights where I was just trying to uh, figure out, like, all right, Lord, give me strength. You know, it, it was this in, in this silence that I, I saw this poem and I started reading it by Wendell Berry. Can somebody read this for me? I go among trees and sit still. All my stirring becomes quiet around me like circles on water. My tasks lie in their places where I left them asleep like cattle. Then what is afraid of me comes and lives a while in my sight. What it fears in me leaves me and the fear of me leaves it. It sings and I hear its song. Then what I am afraid of comes. I live for a while in its sight. What I fear in it leaves me, and the fear of it leaves me. It sings, and I hear its song. After days of labor, mute in my consternations, I hear my song at last, and I sing it. As we sing, the day turns, the trees move. Think on that. In the silence, what I am afraid of comes, 
and lives a while in my sight. What it fears in me leaves me, and the fear of me leaves it. It sings and I hear its song. Then what I am afraid of comes. I live for a while in its sight. What I fear in it leaves it, and the fear of it leaves me. It sings and I hear its song. Psalm 40, be still and know that I'm God. All that stuff that bubbles up in those silent moments, the things that you fear in those silent moments, you realize that God is much bigger than those problems. I end with this. I read this at all of our new hires orientation. This is what we are about. We plant the seeds that one day will grow. We water seeds already planted, knowing that they hold future promise. We lay foundations that will need further development. We provide yeast that produces far beyond our capabilities. We cannot do everything, and there's a sense of liberation in realizing that. This enables us to do something and to do it very well. It may be incomplete, but it is a beginning, a step along the way, an opportunity for the Lord's grace to enter and do the rest. We may never see the end results, but that is the difference between the master builder and the worker. We are the workers, not master builders, ministers, not messiahs, amen. Just some recommended reading. <clears throat> I love Kirk Byron Jones, Dr. Dodd put, this is Dr. Dodd, Right here, this guy right here, get his autograph. That's his book there. Kirk Byron Jones, some other books there that we recommend. This was family time. This was vulnerable time. Lord, thank you for this time together. Lord, thank you for my brothers and sisters in here that you have called us to do this work, caring for one another, caring for the most marginalized among us whose society say does not matter. Lord, in this work, you know that we grow weary. It gets hard. There are times that we say, why, why, God, did you call us for this? Why can't we do something else? But God, we know that you are a God that is present in the time of trouble, in the time of stress, in the time of weariness. Lord, I just feel that there's somebody in this room today that really feels that weight. But Lord, we know that you are a heavy load bearer. So I ask you, God, to strengthen them for the journey. Let them know that you are with them and you are in the business of restoration. You can take those that are cast and you can put us back on our feet again. So Lord, we cry out to you, just saying, Lord, look and have mercy. We trust you, Lord, with our whole hearts. We lean not to our own understanding, but in all our ways, we acknowledge you, trusting that you will lead and direct us in the way that we should go. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We will be careful, Lord, to give you all the praise and all the glory because we know in our own strength we cannot do it, but through you we can do all things. And so, God, we thank you right now. And I pray, Lord, as we go back, as we go back, as we enter back into the world now, that we will let your light shine through us brightly, that people will see you, God, and that we will be strengthened for this road that we're on. Lord, thank you right now. We give you thanks and we give you praise. We give you thanks and we give you praise. And what I love is we don't have to wait until the battle is over, but we can shout glory, hallelujah. I feel better, so much better since I lay my burdens down. Lord, thank you right now. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, all over the room. Give God praise. God bless you and God keep you. Love y'all. Christian Community Health Fellowship exists to encourage, engage, and equip Christians to live out the gospel through health care among the poor and marginalized. If you enjoyed listening to CCHF Talk, make sure you follow, like, and share on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Deezer, or wherever you find your favorite podcasts. To learn more about Christian Community Health Fellowship, 
visit cchf.org and follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Join us next time for another episode of CCHF Talk.